Have you ever wondered what the difference is between HDMI and SDI cables? Maybe you've heard of them, but you're not sure which one to use for your live streaming setup? I'm Josh from Budget Church Live Streaming, and in this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about HDMI and SDI cables, and how to choose the best one for your situation. Let's get into it. So first of all, HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. It's a consumer grade cable that you've probably seen before. It's used to connect input devices like laptops, gaming consoles, cameras, to output devices like monitors, TVs, and projectors. There are different varieties of HDMI cables, such as micro, mini, and standard HDMI. Micro HDMI is super common on cameras, especially DSLR and mirrorless cameras, though you'll also find full-size ports on certain models. Most lower-end video switchers, such as the A10 Mini, have HDMI inputs, so they're definitely super common, even in the production world. By the way, if you want to see a full streaming setup for under $1,000 using the A10 Mini, check out this link up here. HDMI is convenient because it's plug and play, meaning you don't need any special settings or adapters in order to use it. Everyone has used an HDMI cable before, so it's really easy to get started without thinking too much about it. However, HDMI also has some very real downsides that you need to be aware of. One of the biggest drawbacks of HDMI is the signal transmission distance. Depending on who you ask, HDMI can only transmit video reliably for anywhere from 15 to 20 feet. I've personally used HDMI cables up to 50 feet without any issues, but your mileage may vary, literally, depending on the quality of cable you're using and the devices you're using. If you need to go longer than that, you'll need some kind of signal booster or converter, which can add to the cost and complexity of your setup. Another downside of HDMI is that the ports are notorious for wearing out over time leading to the cable coming loose super easily. This can cause signal dropouts or even interruptions in your live stream, which we obviously don't want. Also, if the port on your camera completely wears out, it can render your entire camera body useless for live streaming, which is not great. HDMI also introduces some latency in your video feed, meaning there's a slight delay between what the camera sees and what the switcher receives on the other end. This can be a problem if you're trying to sync your audio and video sources or if you're trying to use your cameras for in-house magnification or iMag. Finally, HDMI is also not super common on higher end equipment, such as professional cameras and switchers. For example, all of the A10 models other than the mini use SDI ports instead of HDMI. So if you think you'll be upgrading your gear in the future, you don't necessarily want to invest too heavily into long HDMI runs because it could mean a lot of unnecessary money down the drain. So HDMI, it's a pretty known entity. What about SDI? So SDI stands for Serial Digital Interface, and it's a professional grade cable that is used to transmit video signals over long distances. SDI ports are present on professional equipment and cameras, as well as higher end switchers, such as Blackmagic's more expensive A10 models. Also, before any commenters come in here and roast me, I know that Blackmagic switchers aren't really high end, but we're still talking about the budget church world, so shh. SDI has several advantages over HDMI that make it way more appropriate for live broadcast. First of all, SDI can transmit video for up to 100 meters, or about 300 feet for us Americans, without any signal loss or degradation. This means you can have cameras far away from your switcher without worrying about the quality or reliability of your video feed. Secondly, SDI has a locking connector called a BNC, which prevents the cable from coming out accidentally. This gives a lot of peace of mind and security when you're live streaming. SDI also has less inherent latency than HDMI, although it's still not zero. But it means your video feed is going to be more in sync with your audio and your other sources, and be more suitable for iMag. The biggest downside of SDI is that it's expensive. HDMI cables can be around 50 cents per linear foot, while SDI cables can often be more like one to two dollars per foot. Multiply that by a 300 foot cable and you'll see what I mean. You also need to be aware of the different types of SDI cables, such as HD SDI, 3G SDI, and 12G SDI. These refer to the bandwidth and resolution that the cable can support. For example, HD SDI can only handle up to 1080i at 60 frames per second, while 12G SDI can handle up to 4K60. You need to make sure that your cables match your devices and your desired output resolution. Most churches these days are just trying to stream at 1080p, and for that, 3G SDI is going to be your best bet. However, if you've got the budget for it and really want to future-proof some in-wall cabling, go ahead and splurge for 12G SDI and just be done with it. Another challenge with SDI is that not many people are familiar with it, especially if they're used to consumer-grade equipment. 
In the volunteer rich church world, you might have to spend some time teaching people how to use SDI cables and connectors and how to troubleshoot any issues that might arise. They're pretty self-explanatory, but you definitely don't want someone breaking off a connector right before service starts, so you'll need some training. Although, that does bring up another upside to SDI. You can actually make and repair your own cables pretty easily. All you need are a couple of specialty tools and you'll be able to put together cables of the perfect length or repair any finicky ones in your system. This helps keep the cost a bit easier to swallow as long as you have the time and know-how to actually make your own cables. So, what situations are good for HDMI and which ones are good for SDI? Well, like most things, it depends on your situation and your budget. HDMI is perfect for short runs, so if you only have a couple of cameras in your booth or close to your switcher, HDMI might honestly be the better option for you. Easy to set up, easy to troubleshoot, easy to replace. Like we said before, SDI is good for long runs, meaning if you have cameras that are farther away from your switcher or even in different rooms or buildings, it's going to be the better option. It's also more reliable than HDMI and it works better with higher end equipment. If you have the budget and the expertise to use it, SDI might be the way to go for you. But what if your cameras only have HDMI ports and your switcher only has SDI ports or vice versa? How do you connect them? Well, you can adapt the signal from one type to another using a device like this, the Blackmagic Microconverter. This device can convert HDMI to SDI or SDI to HDMI depending on which model you get. They're about $66 and super easy to use. You just plug in your HDMI cable on one end and your SDI cable on the other end, provide a little bit of power and you're good to go. If you have an HDMI camera and an HDMI switcher, but you need a long cable run, you can actually convert HDMI to SDI, run a long SDI cable, and then convert back to HDMI on the other end. There are other ways to transmit video signals a long way, such as using fiber optic cables or HDMI over ethernet, However, these methods are a little bit more expensive and complicated than using a simple converter like these Blackmagic microconverters. Fiber optic cables are honestly overkill for most churches, especially when you're getting started, both in cost and complexity. HDMI over Ethernet is pretty easy to use, but it can introduce more latency and interference in your video signal, which can affect your live stream quality, and so it's not really worth it in my opinion. Let me show you what we do at our church. We have four cameras that we use for our live stream. All of them are these Panasonic G85s. All of these cameras have micro HDMI ports, but no SDI ports. Our switcher is the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, which only has SDI inputs. We also have a MacBook running ProPresenter that we feed into our switcher. Each of our cameras has a Blackmagic SDI converter with its rig to convert a very short HDMI cable into a much longer SDI cable run. If you want to see those rigs, check out this video here. These SDI cables run from all throughout the church directly into our switcher in the back of the room. Because our ProPresenter computer sits a lot closer, we actually have an HDMI cable running into a converter that's here at our booth, and then just a short SDI cable into our switcher. In order to run our multi-view, we actually have to convert the other direction. So our switcher only has SDI outputs, which means we have to convert SDI to HDMI and then run that up to our multi-view TV. This setup has worked well for us and it's not too expensive or complicated, honestly. We've been using it for years now and we haven't had any major issues with it. I would definitely love to upgrade our cameras to ones that have SDI outputs, but that's just not something that's realistically in our budget right now, and that's okay. And honestly, it's not even for the SDI outputs, it's really just because those would be better cameras. But things have been working great and saving money on our live stream means we have more to allocate to other kingdom missions. Hopefully you've learned something from this video and figured out what will work best for you and your church. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you found this video helpful, share it with someone else who you also think might find it helpful. Help your friends out by learning and help me out in the process. Until next time.